Blessings. This is Morning Thoughts by Teresa Beam. Every single theological discussion or debate or disagreement I have ever had about what Scripture says, always, not 90%, but always without exception, comes down to what does God mean? Not what does Scripture teach, but what does God mean by the words we read in Scripture? Because the truth is, It doesn't matter how infallible and inerrant the Word of God is if we don't know the infallible and errant interpretation. We can just get God's meaning wrong if we don't have that. Okay, let's just take two examples in the following passages. There's Colossians 1.24. Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regards to Christ's afflictions. For the sake of his body, which is the church. Hmm, now that is a verse that will stump many a theologian. St. Paul is writing that Christ's sufferings are lacking, and somehow for the church, this apostle must suffer? Yeah, that passage can be really confusing. And the next passage we're going to read is in portions of 1 Peter 3 18 through 21. After being made alive, he, Christ, went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism, which now also saves you. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. Now, I've heard many interpretations of this. Many people have guessed at what Peter was meaning by the imprisoned spirits and writing at the waters of baptism save you. There can't be many logical interpretations of these two passages, but not all interpretations can be correct. Do you know what these and other obscure scriptures mean? Many Christians assume that anyone at any age or any culture or any educational level can understand Scripture, even though Scripture never says that. The irony is that most Christians believe that humans are sinful and broken, but somehow, when we pick up Scripture, we become infallible and brilliant and equally know the mind of God. Yet we all read God's word with some disagreement and understanding. Some absolutely know what God really meant in the Genesis story was that each day was a literal 24-hour period, and anyone who disagrees with this interpretation is being rebellious or wicked or something because they seem to them plain and clear. Some people read scripture and believe that abortion is murder and that it is the only way to read it and anyone who disagrees is simply unsaved and unholy and the Holy Spirit doesn't speak to them. Others believe that the rapture is clear in scripture and speaking in tongues and going to church on the seventh day and faith alone is so plainly understood in scripture that if you disagree with them, your born again experience is suspect or you are less filled with the Holy Spirit, or less mature in Christ, than they are. And those who interpret the scripture to read that the scriptures are the, are the Christian's final authority, also agree that the scriptures are so plainly written that each person can read it and get what God meant. But let's face it, if we read scripture, many of us think we know what it means, even when we don't. You see, every single disagreement any person has about theology doesn't really come down to what is written in the Bible, but what God meant by the words in Scripture. And I will go even a little farther, because many Christians claim they, even if they are alone in their unique understanding of a text, know what God means. But they become a mess of people all claiming they know the heart of God when they all disagree on what truths are in the scripture. And they all believe sincerely, most sincerely. And many will even base their souls on their own personal interpretation. So it's not really the sincerity of interpretation that makes it true. 
When disagreements in the theology arise, if we are to know what God meant by what he wrote in the scripture, we need to find out who knows what God meant. I completely hear everyone out there who is answering the Holy Spirit, and they will be referring to John 16, 13, where Jesus says that he will send the Holy Spirit to guide his apostles into all truth. Wait, you say, uh, that is not what the apostle said. Jesus said to the apostles that the Spirit will lead his followers, all any followers and all followers into all truth. Hmm, but that's not what scripture says. That is your interpretation of what Jesus meant. Most Christians believe Jesus was speaking to his apostles as the leader of his, has, of his church. The church itself was to be led by the Holy Spirit into all truth, not individuals. And the arguments of how to read that text begin. Whose interpretation is correct? Mine or those of you arguing out there with me? This is what every single disagreement of theology comes down to. Who knows what God means? And this is the little secret that few Christians ever speak out loud. As much as each of us would like to think we know, we actually are simply following someone else's take on what is written in the Word of God. Some follow Luther's opinion. Some follow Calvin's. Some John Knox or Joseph Smith or Ellen White or Jonathan Edwards or Billy Graham, Carl Barth, Charles Spurgeon, John MacArthur, or R.C. Sproul. And each one of these Christian leaders saw something different in Scripture. So which one of these guys knows what Jesus meant better than the others? Some people would argue that they were not influenced by any minister or theologian. However, because of media and our culture and education, very few humans have had zero Christian influence in their lives. Who born into Christian America can pick up a Bible and read it bias-free? Most people have read or heard the message from a preacher that they agree with and then read that interpretation back into the scripture. God understood that this was going to happen. In fact, perhaps he created it to happen. Perhaps his word was only supposed to be interpreted in a culture that understood his meaning. Maybe Christ not only revealed his truth to us through the Bible, but perhaps he set up those who he gave the authoritative mission to interpret it. Let's go back to scripture. It says God is going to send us authoritative teachers and preachers that the gospel is spread from heart to heart, from ear to ear, voice to voice. That is the way God meant it, from human to human. So we need to find out what human did God give the authoritative uh, responsibility to make sure that Christians pass down not just what Jesus said, but what Jesus meant. And that is the most important thing of all. This has been Morning Thoughts. Have a wonderful day.